Hello, friends. It's June, which is Pride Month, so I'm doing something special. In this video, I'm going to take these Princess Palace pets and paint them as seven different pride flags for the stripes on the rainbow flag. The first one I'm going to do is this tiger here, and I'm going to paint it as... Ow. Ah. God. Oh, gosh, that hurts. Ow. 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 No, no. Ugh. Huh. Okay. So that's not happening. Well, we have this base. It's big, so it won't be too hard to deal with when it comes to the details. I'm not going to modify it first, even though it's really rigid and boring and could probably use some sanding on the belly. But I'm not sanding this. That's a hard no. Since there's only one toy here to customize, I need to compromise on what I'm going to make it show pride. I guess I'll do the full rainbow. The back will be the warm colors and the legs will be blue and purple. The hooves are going to be black and have brown spots. I have doll hair that's the colors of the trans flag, so that's covered. I don't know what gender the horse is, but I'll be referring to them with feminine pronouns. Being a Barbie horse, she's obviously got some factory paint on her, but I'm not going to remove it first. This is definitely a kind of plastic that acetone will melt. You can use acetone sparingly on hard plastic like this, but it gives it a weird texture that I really do not want to deal with in this project, so we're skipping it. I'll give her a couple base coats in white first. The first color that I'm going to put on is yellow. It'll need a few coats, so it's best to start with this color. I want random spots of color, but this attempt at splattering isn't helping. Don't worry, I do this with like two other colors just to make sure that's the case. In the pride flag, yellow represents sunlight, which is said to stimulate new ideas and thoughts, according to VeryWellMind.com. Another color that will need layers is orange, so I'll start that now too. I don't actually have a good orange color, so I mix it up every new layer that you see in this video. Yes, it was a dumb idea. The orange stripe in the flag represents healing, which is always an important part of life, but I personally wish that the damage that we're all healing from can be lessened to a point where the LGBTQ plus and MoGay communities do not need to have such an important part of the flag represented. It's really sad, and I hope with all my heart that everyone will someday find a place where they can be loved, despite the global shunning of people that just want to love. I wanted to see what the softer fade would look like on the spots, so I tried the sponge technique, but I didn't like it. Um, anyway, the next color I paint is green. Green in the pride flag represents nature, which is probably self-explanatory. This paint is very, very satisfactory to me. It's Ceram Coat by Delta Creative, and the matte paints that I've tried so far have gone on solid in basically one layer. This red is also a Ceram matte paint, but red is always weird. I forgive them. I think it took three or four coats to get it solid. I don't really remember. Red represents life in the pride flag. Adding the red really made me think of fruity candy, so that's what I'm going to call her. The legs are going to be blue and purple, so I'm putting down the blue here. I wasn't too sure how far up onto the body I wanted the blue to go. I debated painting the blue onto the belly, but I didn't do that. I knew I wouldn't have come out how I wanted it to if I did. Blue in the pride flag represents peace, serenity, and harmony. Purple or violet represents spirit. I'm going to paint about halfway up her leg in the way that horses have a darker color going towards their hooves. I wasn't sure if I wanted it to be faded colors, but I went and painted it to look like fur. Unfortunately, there wasn't a whole lot of space in the design for black, which represents diversity, but it goes on as her hooves. I wasn't sure that the red is quite good enough, so I tried making it pinker, but I decided that plain red looks better. I thought that the green was too bright and yellowish, so I added some jubilee green to tone it down. It may seem preemptive, but I'm giving her a coat of sealant now, and that's because I'm going to try and add some shading. Because I'm me. An idiot. I shaded each color individually where I needed it. I know that shading with soft chalk pastels takes layers, but I'm impatient. Especially with the highlights. I roughly sketch in patches of white watercolor pencil after sealing it with MSC and smudge it out with a very, very tiny bit of water on a paintbrush. Like, sure. Yeah, 
candy is getting brown speckly spots. I did this on a design before and nope, it still looks like candy coated chocolates. Still candy. Trying to splatter the paint even with the toothbrush technique wasn't working at all. So I dabble on the spots individually all over her with the end of a paintbrush. I concentrate on her legs with a bit more sparse spots on the belly and the head area. Because, of course, I thought that the spots were a little too small, so I went and painted bigger spots where she needed it. Brown on the flag represents inclusivity, which is incredibly important to the LGBTQ and MoGay communities. I tried really hard to make it count in this project. I painted her irises first, which were going to be brown, but I went over it with blue so it would stand out more. It's just the look thing instead of significance thing. Sorry about the framing. I did her slayers in white and gave her pink eyeshadow just to pop. I knew doing this after painting the eyelashes was going to be impossible for me, so I painted on light pink eyelashes underneath her eyes. I'd love to give my stuff better makeup, but I really don't know anything about it. The pupil on the right eye looks good, the other one not so much. Full black eyeliner and big thick black eyelashes. I'm going to give her lipstick too, and that's also black because a yes. I was never good at giving my characters lipstick, and this is a scary color to work with, so I put down some masking tape to get a crisp line and keep it mwah, and that worked out really well. And we don't want the spots to stick out, do we? No! So what do I do? I shade the individual spots. It gets worse. I mix brown and blue saw chalk pastels to get a decent color for shading and add it to the deeper areas. Whatever. Pause. What else can I do to ruin this paint job? Use white pastels directly on the higher areas and blur it out from there. All over her. Yes. Good idea. So anyway, these are the hair colors that I have. White Noise, Baby Unicorn, and DG Blue Glow in the Dark. All from my beloved doll planet. I designed their current logo. I hope you love it. Uh, I was never good at making wefts. Be it impatience or inexperience, this project wasn't an overwhelming success. I left in all of the significant parts of me trying to do this for solidarity to all of my fellow weft noobs. We'll get this one day, maybe. The regular trans flag is fairly straightforward, but in my planning for this month I decided that, if I had gotten to the point, the colors would be what was phased out of the 1978 flag. The pink, albeit lighter here, would represent sex, which is an important part of all relationships and a very prominent aspect of the community in phobic circles. Being part of the included trans flag could represent how physical sex doesn't always correlate with the gender that society assigns with it, and that somebody that is transgender doesn't necessarily need to be transsexual. For the blue in the trans flag part, I suggested it replace the 1978 flag's turquoise stripe, which represents art and music. Art is important in all cultures and is always a way for people to express themselves, but is incredibly important for the people in the LGBTQ and MoGay communities throughout history as a way to portray the spectrum of emotions that being this way in varying societies has on individuals. Art is expression, if nothing else, and is a way to connect people on immeasurable levels. As far as I've seen, white and other pride flags typically represents gender or sex or the lack thereof. I already discussed most of that with pink and I have a new proposal for it. Unity. Blue in the rainbow represents harmony, but that's not quite the same if I may say. Unity is the coming together of different people and communities for a common purpose, which I will call acceptance and not tolerance. Tolerance is only a start to what the LGBTQ plus and MOGA communities need on a global scale, which is the acceptance by families, societies, religions, and laws as the humans that we all are. Unity is coming together across borders and labels as a united community that is welcoming to people that even aren't sure about who they are yet. At least that's a start to why I think white should be for unity.
follow up, hot glue only sticks to freezer baggies when you don't need them to. Use heat safe silicone tools to do this, please. The finger guards from the dollar store are not enough. Trust me. The anchors for Barbie horse hair is part of the main plastic that you can access by splitting them in half, but I just jam the weft best I can into her body. I repainted some of the areas that became dull because of the pastel shading that I did around the spots, as well as the spots, individually. Content warning. The following mentions sex. Now on to our accessories, which are all pride flags. First off, I'm showing the asexual flag. Some people in the LGBTQ plus community believe the A stands for ally, but it does not. It stands for asexual, which are people under an umbrella with a lack of sexual attraction to others. The umbrella includes demi, which are people that are attracted to those that they have emotional connections with, and gray asexual or gray sexual, who have limited a very specific sexual attraction. People that are asexual are not sexually attracted to others, but may still be emotionally and romantically attracted to others. They still feel love and can have a sex drive and enjoy sex, though there is a portion of ace people that are sex repulsed. While asexuals have varying degrees of sexual attraction, if any, they are imperative to the LGBTQ and MoGay gay communities due to their relationship to sex as a whole, as well as the suggestion of separate sexual and romantic attractions. The black in the flag represents asexuality, gray is the gray areas that the umbrella term covers, white is for non-asexual partners and allies to asexuality, and purple represents community. I used two different grays for variety and made the purple a little bit more pink. For more information, I recommend AVEN and asexuality.org, which includes forums to discuss and discover more about the community. These two ribbons are getting base coats in green and will be poly and aromantic. I'll be talking about the latter. Aromantic is basically the romantic version of asexuality. Aromantic people fall on a spectrum of the lack of romantic attraction. Like asexuals, they can still have love for others, but in different ways, including familial and platonic love. Some other relationships with attraction on the aero spec include people that enjoy or are interested in concepts of love, but either do not want to personally participate or have romantic relationships, people that experience conditional romantic attractions, such as after emotional connection, and plenty of others. A common aromantic relationship is queer platonic, which is closer than standard platonic relationships, but isn't romantic. I wanted to represent the two most accepted aromantic flags on this project, so I painted the top of the ribbon as the original four colors, and the bottom as most of Whimsy's design. For the original, the green is the opposite of romance, yellow is platonic love, orange for the spectrum, and black to reject traditional ideas of romance. The Whimsy design uses regular green as a romance, light green for the spectrum, white for non-romantic forms of love, gray for gray romantic, and black for the sexuality spectrum. Aromantic people are often associated with asexuality. They are completely capable of having any other sexual attraction. For more information, I recommend aromanticism.org and A-U-R-E-A -E communities. I painted all of the pride ribbons at the same time, so I'll go over them all while the rest of the footage rolls. From left to right is bi, poly, gender fluid, aromantic as we just covered, non-binary, and pan. Pink in most of these flags represents femininity in some way, but in the bi flag, pink represents attraction to the same gender. Purple is attraction to multiple genders, and blue represents attraction to a different gender. Sometimes the bi prefix is interpreted as meaning two, as in the two traditionally accepted genders, male and female, but it was an early term for being partially straight and partially gay, and it's still used as a broad term for attraction to several genders. On that note, I decided to paint the poly flag, which is a more accurate prefix for that idea. People who identify as poly are attracted to at least two genders, are often attracted to several more, but may not necessarily be attracted to all genders. People that are attracted to all genders go by the prefix pan. The prefix that often goes along with pan is omni, which also means all. I did pan because it's what I identify with, and from my understanding it's attraction regardless of gender, as in gender doesn't matter, while omni is an attraction to all genders. I see it as a passive attraction versus active attraction, but that's my own speculation. In the poly and pan flags, green and yellow represent genders outside of a female-male binary. This is true for the non-binary gender flag, along with white for all genders, purple for the full binary spectrum, and black for a lack of gender. I chose to paint this one because my best friend is non-binary, and because I saw that there was a tiny bit of controversy with the current gender queer flag. I would have rather done that flag than the gender fluid flag but I honestly like those colors more. I wanted the more umbrella term, but anyway, gender fluid means that a person's gender is not stagnant and can vary from different ends of a binary or throughout a full spectrum. Ironically, the black and white on the non-binary flag and gender fluid flags are inverted, so the white is a lack of gender and the black is all genders. Aesthetically speaking, these two are among my favorites. I added a bit of metallic paint to the varnish, and this gives a different effect than regular gloss varnish does, but be careful because it picks up more of the brush strokes than gloss does, unfortunately. 
Trigger warning, the following discusses the Q word. With saddle, I wanted to include the queer flag. I literally just realized that I forgot to paint black on this. I am so sorry. The word queer was used as a derogatory term towards people, typically gay men, that were not cishet. Be they gay, lesbian, trans, gender non-conforming, or anything else I've discussed so far, the term queer has a different meaning to every individual in the LGBTQ plus and mo gay communities. As I use it, I want for it to be taken as anyone who is not cishet that needs to be accepted for who they are. I mean it as an umbrella term, and I thought having it be Candy Saddle will cover her and everyone else that I haven't specifically represented so far. I want for this to encompass all of us. Everyone in the full pride flag, and everyone who still doesn't feel like they fit in. If you're queer, you're queer, and there's nothing wrong with being proud of that. Of who you love. Of who you are. You are a person worthy of love, support, and respect, and you deserve that for being purely you. No matter what anyone says, what anyone tells you, what anyone calls you, you are important and you are worthy, and you deserve to be accepted for everything that you are. Unless you're a pedophile. Pedophiles can get skinned alive. Back to the project. I tried to have a gradient ombre fade with the two blues and the two pinks. I don't know why I had so much trouble with this. These two areas represent same sex slash gender attraction. The green and yellow or orange represents gender queer identities. And the black and white represent the ace and arrow spectrums. The designer created a lot of suggested pride flags, including the alternative purple chevron queer flag. I'm pretty sure. So I'm sure that meaning wasn't at the forefront of their minds for this design. So I'll suggest something. Black could be for diversity, as in the full pride flag. Light blue for male aligned. Blue for attraction to male aligned people. Green for attraction to gender queer people, as in the umbrella sense. White for solidarity, or unity as I suggested before. Yellow for being gender queer, non-binary, gender fluid, and the rest. Pink for attraction to female aligned people. And light pink for female alignment. That's just a suggestion. I didn't really think about it too long. I decided to paint the piping. I think that's what it's called? On the saddle in white, which I think looks really cute with the other colors. It looks kind of kidcore to me. For some reason, I decided to go over in a metallic white. Here's a clip in real time. Pretty cool, right? Definitely, totally, completely worth it. Yeah. Three times, because I decided that plain white looked better than metallic. Doing this killed my hand. And so did writing the script. At least it wasn't on several different customs, right? So anyway, here I am painting these leg guard wrap things. I lost one, so I only have three here. These flags are a little obscure, but I feel like they're important for people that are still figuring themselves out. The pink one is Pomo. The pink and green one is Abro. And the other one is Questioning. I'll start with Abro. Abro is a fluid attraction to others, where attractions can fluctuate between a few genders or all genders. Fluctuation can occur sporadically or at more or less predictable intervals. It's sometimes considered to be under the asexual umbrella. Pomo is the prefix for people that do not feel like any other label fits their attraction. It challenges the definition of queer and looks to unmapped possibilities. That, on a personal level, may be considered questioning. The term describes people that are unsure about their attractions or their gender. The term curious often goes with people who are questioning, like bi-curious and andro-curious. These people are often dismissed as going through a phase in both cishet society and the LGBTQ community. Personally, I feel like if you're uncertain if you're cisgender or heterosexual, you're already queer and part of this community, even if you don't know what label, if any, describes you. The question isn't, am I queer? but should be, how do I label myself to find people like me? We'll be here when you figure it out, if you ever do, but you're loved just the same. Already in progress is this little hair decoration. I'm painting it with the colors of the first polyamorous flag. Polyamory is having a romantic relationship with several partners with a very strong emphasis on communication and trust. Polyamory can stem from one person with multiple partners or be relationships between a defined group of people called a polycule, and everyone is a consenting member. I think it's a good, open way to give as much love to the world as one person as possible, especially with all of the communication that comes with proper polyamorous relationships. 
I started this accessory early on, so excuse the inconsistency. I have this bridle and lead for a Barbie horse, but it more than likely came with a different horse, so I'm sizing it a little better. I want it to be snug for a reason. The pieces have a leather texture to them, and being high fashion TM means they need to be glossy black. This could be just a plain black set, but it's also an opportunity to display something that is sometimes controversial when included in pride parades. I agree that it doesn't have to be made into an inappropriate spectacle, but the kink is a very important part of queer history. I'm speaking, of course, of the leather community. It started as masculinity in fashion and was strongly embraced by butch gay men in the years after the discrimination in the militaries from World War II. It was the start to magazines showing scantily clad men, as well as the beginnings of kink-based communities. Leather transcends homosexuality for both men and women and can be a part of any good LGBTQ member's identity. Two kink communities that are often associated in some way with a leather subculture are the rubber slash latex subculture, which is a more more or less synthetic version of the leather kink, especially in clothing, and the BDSM subculture, which often uses leather or synthetic materials as vehicles to explore and participate in the bondage, discipline, dominant submission, and sadomasochism kink, i.e. BDSM. Being such, the bridal and lead absolutely need to be glossy. Content warning. The following mentions sex. <sighs> that was a lot to cover. Speaking of which, Canada gets one more important accessory, an umbrella, which I definitely needed to practice first. I use a two-piece pattern for it with a super shiny metallic top piece and a plastic folder as the bottom to make it super strong. I'm using a finished chopstick as the rod. Many of the labels I went over so far are umbrella terms, so which one will I use for the umbrella? None, of course. Instead of making this a pride flag, I'm making it an international symbol of the rights for specific people, sex workers. Sex workers have been around forever, often called the oldest profession despite having such massive disrespect from society as a whole to this very day where sex sells but people are still called sluts and whores. Sex workers can range from actual prostitutes to bikini models, and every last one of them should be given the rights necessary to be kept safe and make money from the use of their body as any other corporate slave in this capitalist hell. Sorry, off topic. Long story short, sex workers are currently deprived of rights and a means to be safe and accepted in society the same way that any other queer community needs to be. We all exist, we all matter, and we all should be able to be proud of ourselves every last day of the year. It's time to be loud and proud and celebrate our accomplishments we've made so far and the fight for all of those to come. I hope this video maybe taught you something, or that you at least enjoyed any part of this project. I'm sorry that I didn't get a chance to cover everybody, but please don't feel discouraged, because you are valid and loved, and you deserve to be proud too. Unless you're a pedophile. Pedophiles aren't people.